Good day everyone, welcome back to the High Desert Garden. I've been wanting to make this video for a very long time. I've had it planned for probably the better part of six months, but a whole bunch of other things have gotten in the way, including me being sick for like the last two months. So I'm happy to finally be able to sit down and bring this video to you guys. So my plan for the High Desert Garden channel going forward is that I would like to be able to do this more full time. And in order to be able to do that, the channel does need to do a little bit better. So if you guys can slap a like on this video, subscribe with notifications on, that would be great. The potato tower video is by far my most viewed video with over a quarter of a million views. Now I did make this video a few years back and one of the mistakes that I made when I first started this channel is when I was filming my videos, I filmed them with the idea that people who were going to be viewing those videos would be people that were following the channel and knew a little bit about me and my garden setup. But what I discovered is that when you have a video that gets a lot of attention, uh, most of the people that are viewing that video aren't actually subscribers. So I've had a whole lot of questions and comments on the Potato Tower video, and that's what this video is designed to do, is to explain, to explain things in more detail. So some people didn't really understand why I was doing the experiment with the Potato Tower. And what it comes down to is I was interested in potato towers and I had gone online and searched to try and learn more about it and see if people were having success with this method and what I discovered there were few people having success and there were many people not being successful at all but in examining those videos what I discovered is that the people who weren't being successful with the potato tower, people who were using native soil, clay soil, just soil that does not really help the, the tower in any way whatsoever. And what I would notice as these people were harvesting their towers is just a lack of any sort of roots you know generally when you hill a plant or you you know put dirt up around it the the plant will actually send roots out into that soil and i noticed that that wasn't happening the other thing that i noticed was that the stems the entire plant was rotted away and that when these people were digging through their towers they weren't really finding much of the plant left at all, let alone any potatoes. You know, some had potatoes at the very bottom of the tower, and some, those potatoes had actually began to rot uh, due to being at the bottom of this tower and, and probably moisture building up at the bottom of this tower. So what I set out to do was build a tower uh, and keeping some very important things in mind to try and help that tower be successful. So I had planned to prove that the potatoes can actually grow up the stem as you pile more dirt up on the plant. And in order to accomplish this, my plan was to plant some potatoes in the garden, in the ground, six to eight inches deep in the soil, and then build a box around the plant and as the plant grows kind of slowly introduce more soil and not just any soil but a nice mix a well draining but fluffy soil with some nutrients but mostly I wanted the soil to contain a lot of uh, bacteria that the that you need in organic gardening now, there have been a few people that pointed out that in the soil that I used for the potato tower that I had included worm castings or vermicompost 
in with that soil mix. And they jumped to the conclusion that the plant, the the potatoes, uh, had grown better or that the plant was bigger and healthier because it received all these nutrients that I was feeding the plant. And that is not true. If you research worm castings or vermicompost and, and you want to research and see how much nutrients is in vermicompost, there is very little nutrients. Uh, typically, your worm castings or vermicompost ends up to be a 1-1-1 ratio, somewhere right in there. And so we're talking about one on the nitrogen, one on the potassium, one on the phosphorus. So by adding worm castings to your mix, don't be fooled into thinking that you're adding a lot of nutrients. What you're doing is you're adding the bacteria so that the soil is alive. The gut of a worm is the perfect incubator for bacteria. That's what worms do. Now, did I add any extra nutrients or fertilizer to the tower? No, not any more than I did to the rest of the garden. The other potatoes that weren't grown in the tower received the same amount of compost and also were uh, amended with vermicompost, worm castings. And if you had been following the channel before watching the potato tower video, you would have seen the video that I made on how to turn dirt into soil, where I took a truckload of compost and I spread it all over that garden area and sort of mixed it into the top layer of soil just very lightly and then put six inches or more of wood shavings, wood chips, all over the surface of that garden area. So the potatoes that were not in the tower still had an excellent soil with good nutrients, as well as the mulch on top, holding the moisture in, keeping the bacteria alive in the soil. But the number one complaint or comment on that video were people who were pointing out that I harvested the, the plant too soon, that I harvested the plant before it had died. And there's a, a lot of reasons why I harvested the plant that early. And probably the most important reason is a reason that I have not shared with anybody who's commented on that video yet, but I'm going to share it with you right now. In my research of watching these other people try to be successful at growing potato towers, as I stated already, I noticed that they had really let the plant die and virtually rot away. And then in that case, if you, if you do have success, if you do get your potatoes to grow up the stem, it's kind of hard to prove that your potatoes grew up the stem if your stems have all rotted away or if your potatoes have become detached from the stem. So my plan was to harvest the plant while it was still healthy and alive uh, in the hopes that if I did have potatoes that started to grow up the stems, that I could show that in the video. And it worked. It was amazing. Um, but I had a, a whole lot of people, and, and it's, it's probably partially my fault that I didn't explain why I was harvesting the plant early. Um, I guess I just thought that that would be a given. Now, there are gardeners and, and very successful gardeners with a huge platform and lots of subscribers one of them being in my gardener who w was telling his viewers that potato towers were a gimmick and that some of the people who were doing these potato tower experiments were falsifying them or or being misleading um 
suggesting that people had uh, planted in succession several different uh, potatoes as they added in more soil, they planted more potatoes, etc. And, and then sort of led you to believe that it was just one plant. And if they're being dishonest, that's not right. But that's not a bad idea to, to if you're building a tower to continue to plant more potatoes. And that might be advantageous for somebody who doesn't have a lot of space for their garden. I think the thing you have to consider is everybody's situation is different. Everybody has different climatic conditions and environmental conditions. Everybody has a different property and different amounts of space that they have available for gardening. Now, if you have very little space growing your potatoes vertically, if that's an option, if it works for you, um, then that may be what you might want to do to try and get more potatoes. If you have lots of land and lots of space, it's probably not going to be worth the effort um, that you put into the tower to get possibly a, a little bit of a larger harvest or maybe a lot more of a, of a harvest depending on how successful your tower is. But one thing that I discovered is with this experiment, uh, it was a lot of work. I ended up spending more time on that uh, potato plant than a lot of the other plants in my garden, just watching it, you know, waiting for it to, to grow a little bit more so I can add more soil. And I probably ended up adding, you know, five or six five-gallon buckets full of mixed soil, which I had to mix and prepare and then go out there and uh, add to the to the tower, wait for the plant to grow a little more, add some more. Um, so not that it was a tremendous amount of work, but it, it's still extra effort that you have to put in. And it's up to you, the gardener, to decide if that's worth it for you. And if you have to grow vertically and you don't have the space, maybe it is. Um, if it doesn't get you any better results, then it's probably not worth it for you unless you just have a lot of fun piling up a bunch of dirt. Um, but again, what I set out to prove in this experiment is that it's possible that potatoes will grow up the stem. And there are a few things that you have to do to be successful. You have to understand the soil. You got to make sure that you're using a living soil, not a dead soil. You want fluffy soil with biological activity in the soil. So that might include adding some compost, some worm castings, and keeping your soil light and fluffy and, and have good drainage. Add some sand if you want to. Add some vermiculite. I've seen some people use uh, sawdust, which can work great with potatoes. By bringing up the MI Gardener, I don't want you guys to think that I'm dissing on him or disrespecting. I have a tremendous amount of respect for M.I. Gardner. He is a very knowledgeable gardener. If you guys aren't subscribed and watching him and you're interested in, in learning how to garden and, and successfully grow things, you should absolutely be subscribed to his channel. He's more knowledgeable than I am in many areas uh, and, and much more successful. But what I like to do is I like to experiment. I like to have fun. Gardening really, you don't have to garden the way that somebody else tells you to. There, there's so many different ways to garden. And that's one of the things I really like about gardening is if one method doesn't work for you, you can keep trying or you can switch up your methods and you can try different methods. You don't have to garden the way any one gardener tells you to. You know, I watch a lot of different gardening channels. As I'm watching them, I pick and choose, you know, the, the, the things that I want to try that they're doing, the way that they're growing. So I might pick a few things from uh, like Ray from the Praxis channel. I might pick a few things from uh, Brent from 
his hydroponic channel. I might pick a few things from the MI Gardener channel. And I accumulate this knowledge and this information, and then I try to put it into practice. And I think the important point here is to have fun doing it. I mean, if you're just gardening by some sort of a checklist or a rule book, and you're just trying to produce as much as you can, maybe you're doing that because maybe you're trying to sustain yourself or you're trying to make money at it. For me, it's a hobby, and I have a lot of fun gardening, and that's what I think it should be about for a lot of people because I have seen other gardeners. I used to follow the Rick Van Man show, and he had some excellent, very inspirational gardening videos, and he was uploading videos very frequently, and he was constantly working in the garden and building structures, and, and it was just fascinating watching his uh, progress. But what it happened after a couple of years of this is that he got burned out on gardening. Uh, he wasn't having fun doing it, and he explained all of this in one of his videos, that it became more of a chore uh, and not fun. And I don't want to see you guys get burned out trying to take everything in gardening so seriously uh, and, and not having fun at it. Now, as far as the potato tower, some people who watch the video also assume that I was saying that everybody, should, when they grow potatoes, should grow them in a tower. And that's not at all what I was setting out to um, communicate. And then, of course, the other things you have to take in consideration is... Um, you know, the weather, the time of year you're planting. You know, here in the desert, a lot of people don't realize that in September, it can we can get some of our hottest days during the day, but we can also get some really cold nights in September. I'm talking sub-freezing temperatures uh, at night. You know, one of the things that I <clears throat> have learned is that watching the weather, looking at the sky. When we have an absolute clear day, clear sky, we can get scorching hot sun during the day. And if that sky is still clear when nightfall comes in, there's no blanket, there's no clouds to insulate you. And here in the desert, when that sky is clear at night, we can get really freezing weather. And I think that these are just things that people don't think about when they're watching other gardeners videos they they tend to associate things with their environment their weather what they experience uh, and when they're watching a gardener's video and they're filming and you know it's it's not raining or it looks sunny they, you know they may assume that that's the way it is all the time but what i'm trying to encourage people to do is Think more critically. Think outside the box. Not everybody has the same situation as, as you. Now, I do believe that I made it clear when I was filming the video that if you are going to go with the tower method, you need to make sure that you're using indeterminate potatoes. Several people had watched another gardener's video and I suspect it may have been one of M.I. Gardner's videos because I remember watching his video where he said there is no such thing as determinate versus indeterminate potatoes. And I knew that not to be true. And he, a few videos later, I don't know how much later, I can put both videos in the description so you guys can go watch them. They're really good videos. Um... But he corrected himself in the second video and said, you know, he'd done some research and discovered that there are determinate versus indeterminate potatoes. And um, I did explain in my video that if you want this tower method to be have a chance at being successful, you need to make sure you're using a late variety potato, also known as a indeterminate potato. So those were the three main criticisms or, or comments on the video were the nutrients, 
people felt like I was pumping this potato tower full of nutrients and the other plants didn't receive the same amount of nutrients, and that's not true. Uh, harvesting the plant too soon was done so that you guys could see the plant fully intact and so that when I removed any potatoes that had grown up from the stem, you would hear that nice snap or that nice crunch as it came off the stem and you would know that it's real and it's not some sort of uh, CG or um, camera trickery. And the third thing, yes, indeterminate potatoes do in fact exist. So that's all I have for this episode. It's great to be back. I hope you guys liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you didn't. I really appreciate your help and support. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching and encourage you to grow organic, eat organic, so you can be organic.